one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Hey, welcome back everybody. In today's Shadowcast, we're going to be talking about the upcoming game, The Lord of the Rings Gollum. Um, the, uh, I think it's been in development since as far back as 2019. Uh, it was supposed to come out several times and it got kind of pushed back, uh, probably because of the pandemic and maybe for some other reasons. Uh, but we're going to discuss that today. The uh, developers have put out a batch of new uh, content uh, that really reveals a lot about what the game is going to look like and what it's about. Uh, so we want to go ahead and discuss that today. Uh, and hopefully uh, all this new stuff coming out is going to signal uh, an imminent release of the game. The, the game has a very unique look to it and which may turn off some fans, but we're going to go ahead and do a deep dive today into all we know about the game so far and, uh, and see if it's something uh, that uh, Tolkien fans and Middle Earth fans are, are going to take to or not. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and track Gollum from deep in Wilderland, from the depths of the Misty Mountains to the very dungeons of Mordor. The Lord of the Rings Gollum is a story-driven action-adventure game developed by Daedalic Entertainment, a German gaming company and co-published by Nakon, which is based in France. The game tells the story of Gollum between the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. This game was first announced in the spring of 2019 for release in 2021. When Daedalic partnered with uh, Nakon, the game was delayed to 2022. In May of 2022, a release date was announced for September 1 of that year to be uh, put on Steam, PlayStation, and the Xbox uh, platforms. In July of 22, the developers announced a further delay of a few months but as 2022 came to an end, there was still no release. It was announced in January, I think on the 24th, that uh, the Gollum game is now targeting a release date uh, for this spring or summer, but there is no firm date yet. This game has no allegiance to the uh, Peter Jackson, Warner Brothers, and New Line Cinema franchise meaning it's free to create its own visual style. All of the existing characters, including a shaggy-headed Gollum, have a very different look from the Warner Brother films. Here is a sample from the just-released story trailer. Nose iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to kneel. So shiny. Yes, so beautiful. My precious. The darkness grows beyond our borders. My people are growing anxious. We cannot let this evil linger among us, Gandalf. The Dark Lord, what did you tell him? Nothing. We swears. The Lord sent me, his emissary, to oversee matters in person. The creature. Bring it back. Kill it, if need be. We must find help. He mustn't see us. No, not him.
The game is a single-player, first-person adventure that follows Gollum from the Misty Mountains to his eventual capture in the land of Mordor. It expands on the story of Gollum, letting players choose either the path of Smeagol seeking good or Gollum who falls further into the shadow. The developers have hinted that gameplay will be altered depending on choices made for good or evil. The Lord of the Rings Gollum features stealth gameplay and story adventure, which makes Gollum as a character the perfect choice as a protagonist. We see a cast of familiar characters, such as Gandalf, Thranduil, the Nazgul, Shelob, even the mouth of Sauron, and maybe, just maybe, we'll see the appearance of Aragorn. He does capture Gollum during this time period. There is also a host of new light and dark characters, orcs, humans, and even an outcast elf named Mel, who takes Smeagol under her care. Outlandish hats and headdresses seem to be a theme in this game, giving it a very unique look, to say the least. A lot of Lord of the Rings gaming fans might be turned off by the dramatically different visualizations of Tolkien's world. Familiar characters and locations have a unique design aesthetic that varies from the Jackson films. Baradur, for instance, looks very different. However, one of the exciting aspects of the game is the player's ability to enter the Dark Tower and explore it, which should make for some good fun for fans of Mordor. In fact, the majority of the gameplay takes place in Mirkwood, Moria, and Mordor. I'm looking forward to seeing their vision of the deadly dark of Mirkwood and hopefully get a peek at the dead marshes, perhaps even the Emin Muil. The game also introduces a slew of new dark domains, servants of shadow, and brazen beasts in Middle-earth. Gameplay explores how Sauron used men in positions of command throughout Mordor, which fits nicely into canon. There are great warthogs and evil sheep, apparently. It's obvious this game expands the mythology of Middle-earth far beyond the Tolkien canon. This vision of Middle-earth is much more colorful and exotic than we have seen in previous visions of Tolkien's world. To me, it feels more attuned to the world created for Shadow of Mordor game than to the vision of Middle-earth in the Peter Jackson films. It definitely charts its own path through the lands that Tolkien created. I must say, however, that the game developers definitely seem to have a genuine love of Tolkien and Middle-earth, as is evidenced in this making of video. This is the first time that somebody made a video game um, where we really get into the head of one of the main characters of the books. The Dalek, since it was founded 15 years ago, uh, has always um, specialized on storytelling games. And so we had a lot of experience with characters that were a little bit in stories that were a little bit out of the box. What we wanted to do with Gollum as well is to add a story in the Tolkien universe and make this a narrative-driven game. Look at me. They brought you to him, didn't they? The Dark Lord. What did you tell him? What did you tell Sauron? Before we started with the, with the writing process, we did, of course, a lot of research. We read the books, we watched the movies and read Tolkien's notes that he left about the story and about his writing process and his letters and all we could get our hands on, basically. 
When we started, I fancied myself a talking expert, but I quickly learned that there was just so much that I didn't know. We're working together with another talking expert as well, who's, who's been studying this for his whole life, basically. And I was surprised how much there's still to learn about, about the story. I think the main focus for Gollum was the story which is the main thing that keeps you playing, which, because we, we tell a story that wasn't told before. The backstory of Gollum is in a lot of ways still a mystery. So there are many open questions and many things that Tolkien himself didn't answer. So we had to fill in the gaps and uh, really uh, try to interpret those notes and integrate them into our story and make sure that we are in line with what Tolkien wrote, but still add our own version. So it was quite fun to find out what happens. That's how Tolkien himself kind of uh, saw himself. He saw himself as a historian who finds out what happened in the past in, in, in that world that he created. So that's kind of what we did as well. So we start the game about eight years before uh, the War of the Ring starts, parallel to the, to the first half of the Fellowship of the Ring, when Frodo is still in the Shire and, and basically doesn't know about anything. My favorite part of like in the development process when it comes to art is showing places that we've never seen before. It's like, for example, the inside of Sauron's Tower, like the inside of Bar Bardur. The first half of the game is basically taking place there and really finding a visual style for this gigantic hive of creatures, like how they are living there and how they are like working there, ruled by fear and all the time death everywhere. That was the most fun part. <laughs> we expanded the lore a bit with a few new characters. For example, we are showing evil humans a lot, like humans that are working as spies for Sauron or even like working in the tower next to the orcs and next to the all the other monstrosities. We're even showing a character that grew up inside the Dark Tower. I'm sure for whoever is looking to hear more about characters that look very interesting on the surface but didn't get that much space into the official lore already created, we'll find some new content to fill in those gaps to justify the character's existence into the story. In the end, we do all of this for the fans and, and we, want to, we want to make them happy. We want to make us happy, of course, and hope that uh, the fans like it as well. That's what we do this for. Even though the look of the game has vastly improved since it was first announced, some of the game mechanics and visual style look a bit dated. But this is also not a massive, big-budget game. So that's to be expected. What's more worrisome to me is the visual styling of the game, which is very different from what we are used to seeing of Middle-earth and might turn off some Lord of the Rings fans and gamers. I guess we will just have to wait and see how the game is received. Overall, I'm excited about this game. Um, I tend to like first-person stealth games. That would be sort of my preference in gaming. But I also hope that uh, they don't disregard the use of battles or fighting in the game. That would, I think, be a mistake. I know they, do, they have shown some clips of uh, Gollum fighting, but, you know, he tends to throttle from behind. So we'll see how that plays out in the game and whether that's a, a thing that will be lacking. But as I said, overall, I'm excited to see what this game has to offer. Um, I'm excited to explore uh, some of the areas of Middle Earth that we haven't seen in games before. And I'm also uh, really excited to see inside of uh, Baradur and see what uh, they have, what their vision of that is going to be. 
So anyway, we'll just have to wait and see what fans and uh, gamers think of this new Middle Earth game. Well, that about wraps up today's Shadowcast. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments section below of this new Gollum game. Um, and if you like the content of this video, give us a thumbs up and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. So, until next time, I hope to find you creeping like Gollum through the wilds of Wilderland in search of the precious. Follow.